Hello, and welcome to another instalment from the Diary of Samuel Pepys from the year 1665. Following financial disaster after a decade of austerity under Cromwellian rule and the restoration of 1660, Charles II's kingdom was struggling under a great economic burden. In the first two weeks of July, we find Sam wrestling with money problems as a stark new reality begins to dominate. At work in the naval office, he is struggling to pay wages and bills as the great sickness increases its grip on day-to-day -day life. And houses across the city become shut up, or as we may say today, in lockdown. From Lockdown London in April 2020, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's time once again for us to travel back to the year 1665. Hello, and welcome. Are you sitting comfortably? Good, then we'll begin. I'm Tom Barclay Matchett, the London Storyteller. I share the stories of the people, places and personalities that have made London the finest city on earth. I'm currently sharing readings from the diary of Samuel Pepys in the year 1665, an era with many parallels to our own. Now please, settle in, and we shall begin. July 1665. Called up betimes, though weary and sleepy, by appointment by Mr Povey and Colonel Norwood, to discourse about some payments of Tangier. They gone, I to the office, and there sat all the morning. At noon dined at home, and then to the Duke of Albemarle's by appointment, to give him an account of some disorder in the yard at Portsmouth by workmen's going away of their own accord for lack of money to get work of haymaking or anything else to earn themselves bread. Thence I to Westminster, where I hear the sickness increases greatly. And to the harp and ball with Mary, talking, who tells me simply of her losing her first love in the country in Wales, and coming up hither unknown to friends. And it seems Dr. Williams doth pretend love to her, and I have found him there several times. Thence by coach, and late at the office, and so to bed, sad at the news that seven or eight houses in Basinghall Street are shut up of the plague. The 6th of July, 1665. Up and forth to give order at my pretty grocer's wife's house, who... Her husband tells me is going this day for the summer into the country. I bespoke some sugar and etc. for my father, and so home to the office where all the morning. At noon dined at home, and then by water to Whitehall, to Sir George Carteret about money for the office. A sad thought, for in a little time all must go to rack, winter coming on apace, when a great sum must be ready to pay part of the fleet. And we are so far from it that we have not enough to stop the mouths of poor people and their hands from falling about our ears here, almost in the office. God give good end to it. Sir George Carteret told me one considerable thing. Alderman Black Backwell is ordered abroad upon some private score with a great sum of money wherein I was instrumental the other day in shipping him away. It seems some of his creditors have taken notice of it, and he was like to be broke yesterday in his absence, Sir George Carteret, telling me that the king and the kingdom must as good fall with that man at this time, and that he was forced to give £4,000 himself to answer Backwell's people's occasions, or he must have gone broke." but committed this to me as a great secret, and which I am heartily sorry to hear. Thence, after a little merry discourse of our marrying business, 
I parted and by coach to several places, among others to see my Lord Brunkard, who is not well, but was at rest when I came. I could not see him, nor had much mind. One of the great houses within two doors of him being shut up. And Lord, the number of houses visited, which this day I observed through the town, quite round in my way long by London Lane and London Wall. The 7th of July, 1665. Up, and having set my neighbour, Mr Hudson, wine cooper, at work, drawing out a tierce of wine for the sending of some of it to my wife, I abroad, only taking notice to what condition it hath pleased God to bring me, that at this time I have two tierces of claret, two quarter cask of canary, and a smaller vessel of sack, a vessel of tent, another of Malaga, and another of white wine, all in my wine cellar together, which I believe none of my friends of my name, now alive, ever had of his own at one time. The 13th of July, 1665. Lay long, being sleepy, and then up to the office, my Lord Brunker, after his sickness, being come to the office, and did what business there was, and so I, by water, at night, late, to Sir George Carteret's. But there being no oars to carry me, I was fain to call a sculler that had a gentleman already in it. And he proved a man of love to music, and he and I sung together the way down, with great pleasure, and an accident extraordinary to be met with. There came to dinner, they having dined, but my lady caused something to be brought for me, and I dined well, and mighty merry, especially especially my lady Slany, and I about eating of cream and brown bread, which she loves as much as I. Thence, after long discourse with them, and my lady alone, I and wife, who by agreement met me here, took leave, and I saw my wife a little way down, it troubling me. That this absence makes us a little strange instead of more fond. And so parted, and I home to some letters, and then home to bed. Above seven hundred dead of the plague this week. The 14th of July, 1665. My Lady Jemima is beyond expectation come to Dagenham, where Mr Carteret is to go to visit her tomorrow and my proposal of him of waiting on him, he being to go alone to all persons strangers to him, was well accepted, and so I go with him. But, Lord, to see how my, la my kind, my lady Carteret is to her, sends her the most rich jewels, and provides bedding and things of all sorts most richly for her, which makes my lady and me out of our wits almost to see the kindness she treats us all with, as if they would buy the young lady. Thence away home, and foreseeing my being abroad two days, did sit up late, making of letters ready against tomorrow, and other things, and so to bed to be up betimes by the help of, the, of a larum watch, which by chance I borrowed of my watchmaker today, while my own is mending. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please don't forget to add your comments, like and subscribe. Cheerio!